Hello and welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Fallout New Vegas handguns and we are going to be ranking them in our tier list. And as you can kind of see on the tier list, we don't have a D tier because I don't think any of the handguns in Fallout New Vegas are a D tier. These are just going to be the standard handguns that just use regular bullets. We will talk about the laser handguns a different time. So first up we have the Silent 22. This is one of the very first handguns that you can get in Fallout New Vegas, although it is kind of an odd one to get as well. This one is internally suppressed, which is pretty awesome. This one takes the 22 caliber bullet, which is kind of cool, but also not that great because there's only a couple versions of the 22 bullet. The regular 22s, the hollow points, and then the planking rounds, none of which are really that great unless you're fighting uh, soft targets or enemies without any sort of armor, in which case then the hollow points can do really well. The Silent 22 does low damage per shot, coming in at 9 damage base, but it does have a reasonably good DPS because you can shoot this pretty quick, it has nice sights, and it also has a higher than average crit chance at 3 times crit. It also does 18 damage on crit, so it does more damage than what is normal. Most weapons usually just do the same amount of damage on crit. So all of this is quite nice. It's fairly accurate for a handgun, and there are two really good things about the Silent 22. One is that you don't need any sneak to sneak this into any place if you would like to. And the other part is that you don't need any stats to use it either. It's the only handgun that requires one strength and zero guns, making it a decent handgun all the way around. It's still not going to be that great and it's going to go right into our C tier because once you come up against armored enemies, it does kind of fall apart. And if you throw hollow points into this, it can be kind of a little menace uh, against those type of enemies. After the 22, we have the 9mm handgun. This one is far more common than the 22. It's extremely common in the early game, and it's probably going to be one of the weapons that you pick up and use pretty often throughout the early game, at least if you are going with a guns build. This one it only requires two strength, so barely any more strength than the Silent 22. Doesn't have any requirements as far as guns. It does low damage per shot, having decent DPS, and this one can be modified unlike the Silent 22. You can have an extended mag, taking it from 13 rounds to 20 rounds, as well as you can put a short range scope on it if you would like. The iron sights I find to be pretty good though on it. The 9mm bullet is extremely common throughout the early game, which is really cool. It also gets a couple different variations of 9mm bullets, so it has more utility than something like the Silent 22. Overall, it's a pretty good gun but it's still nothing way amazing compared to some of the other guns that we have on this list. So once again, I'm going to say that the regular 9mm is a C tier, higher than the 22, at least for practical purposes. Standard 9mm is a decent starting handgun and will serve you well, but does kind of fall off towards the later game. Our next handgun is Maria. This is the unique 9mm. This one has very similar stats to the standard 9mm, although it does more damage, it has more DPS because of it having more damage, and it has a higher crit chance. So it has a 2 times crit multiplier rather than the 1 times, which is very useful. It also, I believe, takes less action points, so it's better for a VATS build. It has less spread as well, being one of the more accurate handguns. This one you get from Benny. You can kill Benny at any time throughout the game or there's plenty of opportunities to kill Benny, and you can take this off him. There's even an achievement for taking it off of him and killing him with it, so that's kind of nice. This one cannot be modified, like most of the unique weapons in this game, so you are stuck with the 13 round magazine and the regular iron sights, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And Maria is overall a really useful gun. 9mm, like I said, is very plentiful throughout the game, and you do get a couple options with it. Having bonus crit chance is really all the 9mm needs, as well as just having a little bit higher bump in the base stats. You can have Maria do actually pretty good DPS. I'm going to put Maria on the high end of B tier, low end of A tier. It's somewhere right in here. Up next, we have the 357 Magnum. This is one of the very first handguns that you can also get in the game. You can actually steal this right at the very start of the bar if you would like to have one, which is what I usually do. The 357 Magnum does decent damage per shot, although it has a somewhat slow rate of fire. Not really for a single action revolver, and it, it, you actually shoot it really fast in New Vegas compared to other games. It is fairly accurate for a handgun, but it does have a slow reload. Again, for New Vegas, not for other games that have single action gate loading revolvers. In New Vegas, this thing is incredibly fast, but even still, all the other guns are also incredibly fast, making the 357 kind of an odd choice to take. It has two modifications. You can have a longer barrel, which gives it more damage, and you can have a increased cylinder or a high definition cylinder. I think that's what HD stands for in this case too, making it have a higher amount of health. That is pretty useful and the fact that it takes 357 rounds is pretty useful as well because you can get the jacketed flat points for it if you have a hand loader which is really strong, gives it more damage and armor breaking. You could also put in things like the 38 special into it so that you do less damage but the gun also takes uh, less damage when firing it. 
Overall, this one is kind of okay as well for a starting weapon. I think I'd put this one also into C tier, probably in between the 9mm and the Silent 22. Up next, we got Lucky. Lucky is the unique 357, which uh, has basically more everything than the 357. It has more damage, more DPS. I think it has the same reload speed, or at least it seems to, but it does have a much higher crit chance at 2.5 rather than the standard one times. Crit damage is pretty good on it, dealing 30 damage from that. It has low spread. It's one of the more accurate handguns. It's also, in my opinion, one of the better looking handguns. It still doesn't have high requirements like the 357. It takes zero guns and only three strength to use effectively. Its main downsides are that its rate of fire is kind of slow, again, compared to other things in New Vegas. And its reload speed is kind of slow, again, to, compared to other things in New Vegas. And uh, you can get this one at the Steve Bison Hotel in prim where you just need to pick a hard lock in order to get it so you can get it very early on too i would say lucky is probably our first a tier gun it's overall very solid even though it does have some drawbacks with its reload speed and its rate of fire up next is the 44 magnum the 44 magnum is an all-around really solid handgun it actually has the most health out of any of the handguns in new vegas assuming you have the heavy frame on it which is one of its modifications even without that it still has a lot of health this does pretty high damage, has pretty high DPS, has a fast reload since it has a swing out cylinder, so it is quicker to reload than like the 357s. You can put the heavy frame on it, giving it a ton of health, and you can put a scope on it, which the 44 with a scope is not bad, although its iron sights are also pretty good. Overall, the 44 is just an all around pretty solid handgun in my opinion, and I would put this one up into A tier. The 44 uh, rounds are also really useful because if you have hand loader, you can get the semi wad cutters. Now, the next handgun, which I don't have here for whatever reason, is the Mysterious Magnum. This is the unique 44 Magnum that does a little bit more damage, has a pretty sizable amount of uh, rate of fire increase, which is kind of nice. You notice that when firing between the two of them. Still does good DPS. Doesn't have any sort of extra crit modifier. This one is, I would also say, like on par with the 44 Magnum, although it does get extra points from it just doing its signature sound effects whenever you pull it out and put it away. You get the Mysterious Magnum on the side of the road. The Stranger has it. You can get this a couple of different ways. You could either, I believe, reverse pickpocket him and get it, kill him and get it, or do a mission where you get him a job at the tops, and then either with enough barter or speech, you can get him to give you the Mysterious Magnum. All of those are options if you would like to use it. It is a really cool gun, but not necessarily any stronger than something like the 44 Magnum. So I would also put this one up into A tier. Up next, we have the 10mm handgun. This one is a staple in all the Fallout games as well. This one has decent damage per shot, good DPS, not really the best iron sights. I don't like the iron sights on the 10mm. This does have quite a few modifications though. You can have an extended magazine, taking it from 12 shots to 16 rounds. You can also have a laser sight, which makes it more accurate, which is nice because the 10 millimeter is one of the least accurate handguns. And you can also have a suppressor on it if you'd like, making it silent. You can also sneak this into casinos, which is nice. The 10 millimeter round is okay in Fallout New Vegas. There's nothing really special about it in this one. Everything about the 10 millimeter is just kind of okay to a little bit above average, so long as you have ammo for it. So I would put the 10 millimeter into B tier, but it's you know, it's right on the edge of B tier going to C tier. The weathered 10 millimeter is the unique version of it, which has slightly better stats. This is the only unique weapon that you can actually modify, so you can put all the same mods on it, putting the suppressor, the extended magazine, and the laser sight on it if you would like. And with all of that, I would also say it's B tier, slightly above the standard handgun, but both these are teetering on C tier. Our next handgun is the police pistol. This one you can get in the Sierra Madre. This one's a 357 revolver with a swing out cylinder, so it does reload quite a bit faster than the standard 357, which does make it better. It has okay damage, decent DPS, actually higher crit damage than what its standard damage is, which is kind of nice. And it has okay sights. There's nothing really outstanding about the police pistol, in my opinion but it's decent at just about everything. So I would put this one into B tier. It's definitely better than the standard 357, and I think I'd probably put it above the 10 millimeters just because of the ammo type that it has. The 357 ammo is just a little bit better for more different targets than something like the 10 millimeter. Our next handgun is the 556 pistol. And this one's kind of an interesting one. This one is just with the Gunrunner's arsenal. So you will have to buy it from somebody. You can't just find it on the ground anywhere and no enemy will have it unless you have mods that enable them to have it. This one fires the 556 round or the 223 round, depending on whichever ammunition you want to throw in it. They're both the same. It's just one's metric, one's imperial for anybody wondering. 
This does give it a large pool of different ammos it can use though, because it can use hollow point rounds, it can use armor piercing rounds, it can use the match rounds, it can use the 223 rounds, which are all nice. And this does hold five shots, but it does reload fairly quick. It does okay damage per shot, good DPS, and this does actually have a two times crit modifier on it, which is pretty good. Spread is not one of the best out of the handguns, but its ammunition really puts this one ahead of some of the other options. And I would say that this is a solid B tier, above average handgun in my opinion. Next, we have the unique version of that, which is called That Gun. This is in the base game, and you can get this by buying it either at Novak or stealing it at Novak. Either way works if you want to take it. This one's just slightly better than the uh, 556 handgun at basically everything. It has a little bit higher crit chance, it has a little bit higher crit damage, it has a little bit higher base damage, and there's no real reason for you not just to grab this one. It also has more DPS because it has higher damage. This one is really nice, and uh, this one's probably another solid B tier, if not an A tier. Next, we have the Hunting Revolver. This one is a very big handgun that takes the 4570 round. This also requires a high amount of guns and strength to wield compared to the other handguns at 6 strength and 75 guns. This does really high damage per shot. It does okay DPS, mostly because it does so high damage per shot. It has an average crit multiplier and crit damage, but that's still pretty good for how high its damage is. 4570 rounds are pretty devastating no matter what you hit, and this one does always come with a scope. It's 5 rounds unless you have the Gunrunner's Arsenal and you put the 6 round cylinder into it, which is an option, so then it goes up to that. It also is one of the more accurate handguns in the game, as you would kind of imagine. The downside to this one and the Ranger Sequoia, which is coming up, is that they can break fairly easy. They don't have the most health out of any of the guns. You're not going to be shooting them as much as some of the other handguns, so that does kind of offset it, but it is something to consider. And I would say that the Hunting Revolver is probably an A tier. You also can't sneak this in anywhere, so it does kind of lose out on points there, but still pretty good overall. Next handgun is the Ranger Sequoia. This is the unique version of the Hunting Revolver, although you can get multiples of these, so that's kind of nice. This is also 4570. This does not have the scope on it, so you do have to aim down sights with it. If you would like to do that, you could always hit fire it, I guess, too. This does really high damage per shot. It actually has an above average crit multiplier by 1.5, so you are more likely to hit crits than normal. And I believe this is the most accurate or one of the most accurate handguns in the game. 4570 rounds are very devastating like we talked about with the hunting revolver. If you just want the most damage per shot out of the handguns, this is the handgun to go for. This one I would say is probably our first S tier handgun, although it does come with the downside of you can't sneak it into any area and it also has the downside of it breaking fairly quick. Both of those can be bad, but you can make weapon repair kits, or if you take jury rigging, it's not a huge deal for the weapon health. Our next handgun is the 12.7mm pistol, which is uh, another very big handgun. This requires, I think, the most strength out of any of the handguns, requiring 7 in order for you to wield it, and it also requires 75 guns. This does really high damage per shot, as well as it does high damage per second. It reloads fairly quick, but it is, I think, the least accurate handgun in the game, so it does have that against it. The 12.7mm round is a little bit interesting too because standard 12.7mm works fine against everything just because the weapon has enough damage to uh, be able to use it, but for unique ammunitions it really only has hollow points and jacketed hollow points, both of which not doing incredibly well against armor and in which case you would just want to use the standard handgun rounds. You also can't sneak this one in particular into casinos, although you can sneak the unique one in, which we'll talk about here in a second. Making this one just kind of okay overall, it's still a decent handgun, but it's not a weapon that I usually go for that often. Honestly, I think I might just be putting this one in like B tier. Looking at some of these other weapons, I might want to move them up because I think that they're actually better than the 12.7mm, unless of course you get this early on and you get enough rounds for it. In which case, then this is pretty powerful, but this is more of a late game gun. And compared to the other late game guns, I don't think it's quite as good. I spoke too soon. Little Devil actually requires more strength in order for you to wield effectively, requiring 8 strength, which is pretty crazy for it. It does do high damage and really high damage per second because it is a semi-automatic handgun. You can also sneak this one into areas because for whatever reason you can, I don't know why. This one also has a 2 times crit modifier, which is really good. Main downsides to this one are that it's still not very accurate for a handgun. It is more accurate than the standard version of the 12.7mm handgun, and the ammunition is a little bit limiting in the things that you can kill with it. That being said, it is still a really good handgun, and I would probably put this at A tier. It's probably one of the better handguns. I'd probably move it probably to the top of A tier. I don't think it's quite S tier though, 
even though, well, against soft body targets, it absolutely is, because you throw hollow points into this and it's going to shred right through them. But against armored enemies, it's going to be a little bit weaker than something like the Ranger Sequoia is, and probably weaker than something like the 44 Magnum or the Mysterious Magnum would be. Our next handgun is the 45 Automatic Pistol. This one you can find at Zion National Park. You can either get it from dead tribals and pick them up off their bodies, find them around the place, or you can buy them from any of the tribals too. This doesn't require too high a stats. It does okay damage per shot, good damage per second, and it's not necessarily the most accurate handgun. It does have some unique mods to it, being a suppressor on it, which is pretty nice, and an HD uh, slide on it, which increases its health. That's also pretty good because it doesn't have the highest amount of health, but it's okay for a handgun. 45 rounds do actually come in quite a few different varieties, and uh, the super rounds are quite powerful for it, so that's all around pretty good. Even so, I would still say this is kind of just an above average handgun and probably is going to go into B tier with some of these other weapons. Better than like the 10mm or the police pistol, but not as strong as some of them. And honestly, right now, let's just move Maria up to A tier and also that gun up to A tier. I'll keep the 5.56 pistol here because that gun is just a straight upgrade from it, but uh, I feel like these two belong in a higher tier than the rest of these weapons right now. And then for our final handgun, we have a light shining in darkness. This is probably the strongest handgun in the game. I'm just gonna say that outright. This one has low requirements, or at least lower strength requirements at three. It has good damage, extremely high damage per second. It reloads insanely fast, so even though it only has a six round magazine, it really doesn't matter. You reload this thing in like half a second. It has a two times crit modifier, which is really good. It has fairly low spread, so it is one of the more accurate handguns, and you can sneak it into places. It's probably the best handgun or one of the best handguns in the whole game, and I would say that this one is the top of S tier. Even better than the Ranger Sequoia, unless you just want sheer damage per shot, in which case the Ranger Sequoia beats out everything else. A light shining in darkness you get at the very end of Honest Hearts, to where it's Joshua Graham's pistol and you get it in the box at the end of the mission. Little Devil I forgot to mention as well where you get it, you buy this at Mick and Ralph's, a little bit anticlimactic, but that's where you get that one. And there we have all the handguns ranked in our tier list here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And if you'd like to see more of my Fallout content, be sure to click over here. Should be a playlist right there that will take you to all of the videos that I have on Fallout New Vegas. Thanks, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.